Hello everyone, I am Boofire191. No doubt one of the most aggravating aspects of Star Wars The Clone Wars was their constant retconning well before Disney bought the license. The most angering example of this is what happened to the Mandalorians. They turned the most fleshed out culture in Star Wars, who were perpetual space badasses, into, well, space hippies. Except for Death Watch, who represent the true Mandalorians. Right? Well, no. You see, I never truly understood the anger surrounding the new Mandalorians. Well, I did, but I just didn't understand why people were calling it a retcon. With that said, I'm gonna contradict myself and say, yes, the stuff that happens with the Mandalorian protectors as well as the other things that happened during the war, you know, Galactic Civil War and Clone Wars, is gone. But everything else before that is still intact, including the explanation as to why the new Mandalorians rose to power. First off, let's talk about the Mandalorian Excision. Essentially, it's a straight-up war crime committed by the Jedi Order. This event was created while the Clone Wars show was going on as an explanation as to why Mandalore went from an Earth-like world to a desert. This event happened in 738 BBY, and was a preemptive strike by the Jedi and planetary defense forces of the different planets, after Mandalore refused to join the Republic. The Mandalorians had risen in power, and were going through an era of unprecedented growth. Fearing another Mandalorian war scenario, the Jedi attacked and devastated Mandalorian space, because that worked out so well the last time. Fenal, Ordo, Concord Dawn, and Mandalore were turned into wastelands. Then the Jedi created a puppet government, who later, in turn, spawned the peace-loving new Mandalorians. Needless to say, this created a lot of anti-Jedi sentiment within the Mandalorians. Jump a few centuries forward. The new Mandalorians lose a lot of their power, and Mandalore is undergoing another age of growth. Side note, I am now stepping into material created well before the Clone Wars cartoon. So this is before all of the retconning occurred. At this point, a new Mandalore, Jester Muriel, rose to power and wanted to take his people down a new path. He wanted his people to go back to the roots as warriors, but ones with honor. He introduced the Super Commando Codex, which stated, Mandos who wanted to fight would be honorable mercenaries who would fight for profit or a cause. So, he's essentially saying, hey, stop being pirates, you fucking assholes. This, however, created a rift. Tor Vizsla wanted to go back to the old ways, while the rising in popularity new Mandalorians wanted to be pacifists. Vizsla and Muriel could not reconcile their disagreements and went to war. Vizsla created Death Watch, a group who was made up of undisciplined but skilled warriors who wanted to go back to the old ways, while Muriel and his followers became the aptly named True Mandalorians, or only Mandalorians if you get me in a chatty mood. The True Mandalorians defeated Death Watch during the Battle of Concord Dawn, while the battle was raging, Jango Fett, when he was a young child, saw his family get murdered in front of him. Now, I say the true Mandalorians won the war, but this is only partly true. Six years later, Death Watch returned after ambushing the true Mandalorians on Corda 6, who were undergoing a mission. Muriel was killed, and being the best of the warriors, Jango became the new Mandalore. Now, 12 years later, on an assignment on the planet of Galadran, I hope that's how it's said, the governor of the planet who the true Mandalorians were working for, betrayed the group, and called the Jedi to defend the planet from the Mandalorians who were slaughtering their civilians. All too ready to believe Mandalorians as monsters, the Jedi attacked and the true Mandalorians were defeated. All of them were killed except for Jango who was sold into slavery. Years passed, and Jango was able to escape. He tracked down Tor Vizsla and killed him like the traitor's dog he was. With all that said, just a bit of, um, not recollection, but just a bit of a review of what happened. Every legitimate battle the Death Watch got into with the true Mandalorians resulted in their defeat. So Death Watch had to go play sneaky, sneaky politics to kill off their rivals. Not very Mandalorian, if you ask me. The Civil War happened in the new canon. The Clone Wars brings it up, but honestly, a few revisions need to be made for this to fit in better. This war needs to have gone on longer, so no lulls in the fighting. 
as well as be more grand in scope, none of this small-scale shenanigans. For all intents and purposes, the Civil War from the comics happened, just on a grander scale. So during this war, the two sides killed the ever-living shit of each other, as Mandalorians often do, and the new Mandalorians being the only group not fighting means their supporters were still alive. Living supporters means more political power. Despite winning, winning, Death Watch had very few people left, nowhere near enough supporters to go head-to-head -head with the new Mandalorians, and the true Mandalorians were all but gone. I still have hope that some of them fucked off to Duck Sun because Mandalorians and that damn moon. Unfortunately, I fear this is just not the case. So, going on a little farther, Satine later filled the power vacuum after some assassinations attempts, which is from a book that explains her relationship with Kenobi. And then this leads to the domination of the new Mandalorian way of life. So to sum this up, the Jedi committed genocide, there's no getting around that. This leads to a slow rebuilding and restructuring of Mandalorian society. During this time of rebirth, the two traditional Mandalorian factions killed each other off, creating a power vacuum that the new Mandalorians filled. So yeah, with all of that said, I'm gonna say one more thing. And this is gonna be a bit off, well not a bit off, this is off script, but Jesus Christ, man, this is just a complete injustice to the Mandalorians. Now I'm not talking about the retconning, I mean, that's a bit shitty. I'm talking about what the Jedi did to the Mandalorians. To break this down, the events prior to um, the Mandalorian excision, or actually even before that, before 1000 ABY, or BBY I should say, before 1000 BBY, the galaxy was locked into the new Sith Wars, and as one of my videos, I'll put a link in the description below, I explain how Star Wars, the, basically how the Republic lost a lot of its technology. And it's basically that during all of these wars, the Republic couldn't sustain itself. Now, why am I rambling on about an old video? Well, I'll explain. Because during the new Mandalorian Wars, and even as we see in uh, Star Wars Old Republic, Knights of the Eternal Throne, and Fallen Empire, the Mandalorians are standing against the only... They're the only ones standing against the darkness as a whole cohesive people. Mandalore, Shea Vizsla throws her lot in with the Outlander, and risks the complete destruction of her people to save the galaxy. And then you cut to the new Sith Wars. The Mandalorians are fighting against the Sith during this time, and I would wager they're really the only faction in that part of space, because the Republic had to retreat inward to protect itself, they were the only people in that space who were protecting the people, not Mandalorians included, against the Sith. So now, you cut to the point of the excision, 738 BBY. The Mandalorians are very proud of their independence, and they're finally rebuilding, they're finally becoming technologic, they're trying to innovate again. So, the Jedi decide, hey, we're gonna go destroy these people who, over the past thousands, thousands, yeah, over the past few thousand years, have stood against the darkness time and time again, Fuck it, let's go kill them. So then, after destroying them for little to no fucking reason, the Mandalorians are now a broken and shattered people. They had a chance at a rebirth, at perhaps something that Jester was trying, to be honorable warriors. We don't know what would have happened, but I wager that would be the case, because the last two major conflicts the Mandalorians, the Mandalorians, sorry, had been in, involved them fighting against someone who was evil. But then the Jedi are like, no, they're not a part of the Republic, we'll just destroy them. So then, this leads to the create... the create... This leads to the complete destruction of Mandalorian culture and society, to the point where the main idea that family is thicker than blood is basically gone. That, you know, a lot of the things that made the Mandalorian culture awesome was basically gone. It's just angering. Like, I enjoy the Jedi, I enjoy the Republic, but then when you look through the expanded universe stuff and you see these fucking atrocities, it is just disheartening and aggravating. But yeah, that little ramble aside, thank you all for watching. I've been Bufar191. Have a good fucking day.